Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you just a really quick simplified version of using um, dimensional analysis and the mole ratio. All right, Con conversion factors. That's what we're going to be looking at. Now, like I said, this is going to be a really easy version. Uh, if you are looking for a more in-depth look at stoichiometry, um, I'll have a video on that later on. But this one's just quick and easy. The, the baby steps. All right. So let's follow along and talk about mole ratios and conversion factors. All right. So we've already talked about molar mass, right? That is the mass of one mole of a substance. All right. We, we worked through it and practiced. And so you should know what that is. And we know that the unit for this is grams per mole. All right, so like for water, it is 18.02 grams per every one mole. That's a conversion factor. And you've used conversion factors your whole life. And right? you just didn't know it. Like it, you do it in your head so fast that you just don't even pay attention to it. Like our example right here where one dozen is equal to 12 eggs, right? If I have 12 eggs, I have one dozen. All right, well, what happens if you had, say, three dozen, and you want to know what is the number of eggs that you have? Well, you could use this ratio, this conversion factor, to figure out the number of eggs. Well, you would say, okay, well, I have three dozen eggs, so how many eggs is that? And in just regular form, getting rid of the dozen. Well, you would say, well, I have 12 eggs per every one dozen. Okay, and then we would just simply multiply this out. This is dimensional analysis, where we multiply conversion factors so we get the unit that we want. I'd like to note or point out to you, let me take a look at this. Dozen right here is kind of like over one. We know how whole numbers are. All right, so that's dozen. And if we look at our conversion factor, our ratio, okay, we see that dozen's on the bottom right there. So I could simply go, oh, this dozen on the top and dozen on the bottom cancel out, and I am left with some answer, which is going to be in the unit that I want, eggs. So 3 times 12, 36 eggs. All right, now, molar mass, grams per mole, all right, this unit, we could use this exactly the same way that we use eggs and dozen. Right, we could say, well, it's this many grams per mole and this many moles per gram. Right, we could use a conversion factor to interchange between those two units for our compounds. And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to go from moles to grams, grams to moles. We're even going to go from moles to atoms. We're going to go to grams to atoms. All right, and, and instead of going over what I would call the mole road or breaking down stoichiometry uh, for you right now, we're going to just look at these conversion factors and work on this. This is going to get us introduced to what we will look at later on. All right, we're going to have six different conversion factors, okay? These ratios, as I call them. If you look at them, of these six, you'll see that there is a unit on top and a unit on the bottom as well, right? We're going to use it just like we did the dozen equals 12 eggs. Also note that four of them are going to involve you finding the molar mass for that compound. So anytime that we're talking about grams in these conversion factors, it is the molar mass that you will put there, one mole over the molar mass, right? I'm calling it the number of grams because grams are what we're going to be looking at in the word problems. <clears throat> Over on the right-hand side, you'll see that several include a scientific notation, right? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, right? Make sure you put parentheses around that. 
Avogadro's number. All right, you gotta follow the order of operations. Make sure you use parentheses. Make sure you type these in. You might wanna write the work out and then type it in correctly. That way you don't get your numbers confused. But we are going to come up with a way of starting off with a word problem and figuring out which one of these six conversion vectors we're gonna to use to get the answer that we want. All right, the way we're gonna have that is like a word problem. Okay, and we're gonna break it down by remembering this. Which of these conversion factors do I need to select? Which ones are gonna be the correct ones for me? Now, if you look at this, this conversion factor right here, and it just has you know, no numbers, but it's gonna tell you about the units. What am I looking for? All right, well, the top one is the unit that you're looking for, what you want your answer to end up in. So if grams is up top on the conversion factor, that is going to be what your answer is gunning for, what you want. All right, and then the bottom one is the unit that was given in the problem, all right, the, the given information, because you want to cancel that one out to get the right unit. And while I'm doing these two examples, I'm going to show you this, and we're going to select which one of the six by looking for these things, what was given and what you're looking for, the unknown. So let's go ahead and try an example, okay? So I have a word problem up here, and I'll also include the six uh, conversion factors down below. Okay, so it says convert 100 grams of KCl, potassium chloride, to moles. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 100 grams and we're gonna multiply it by our conversion factor to get an answer that we want. Well, looking at the problems, the given is easy. The given is in grams. Okay, 100 grams is what's given. Now let's take a look at our conversion factors down here. We're going to look and see which one of these has the given, aka the bottom number, because let's not forget, given up down here, and then the unknown up top. Okay, so which ones have grams is the unit for the bottom. I see this one right here, and this one as well. Okay, so which one of these is it? Well, we, we know that the bottom is in grams, and it says it's the molar mass, right? The molar mass is the number of grams for this. So for KCL, the molar mass is going to be 74.55 grams per every mole. That is the molar mass for KCL. If you don't remember how to do that, maybe go back and check out one of my other videos about finding the molar mass. Okay, so both of these conversion factors, the ratios down here at the bottom, need to have that as the bottom. Okay, now we know that the top number, okay, the top number is the unknown, what we're trying to find, what we're trying to have our answer. In. Well, this is the, what I'm looking for, the unknown. All right, so which one of our two ratios that we were looking at has moles on the top? And it's this one. All right, that means this other one down here, we're not gonna look at anymore. We're not gonna use for anything for that. And we are gonna stare at this one. It says one mole. I don't write anything else. It says one mole is what we put right there. So that's what we put at the top. And now we could go ahead and calculate this out. I take 100, all right, times one, because you always multiply by the top and then divide by the bottom number. So this is like a multiplication up here, and this is division down there. All right, so 100 times one divided by 74.55. Go ahead and type that into your calculator, and what you're gonna get is 74.55, so it's 1.34. Now you're probably asking, asking yourself, well, what is my unit? What unit do I put next to 1.34? Well, moles is what your answer you work really hard to get. 
And so moles is your answer. And if you are really interested in making sure that you have the right answer, let's go ahead and check our problem to see if we set it up right. I have grams up top right here. And it cancels out with that grams right there. And so I'm left with just moles. So this is the correct answer for this problem. Yay. All right, let's take a look at another one because I'm pretty sure with just one example, you're probably going, what in the world is he talking about? So let's see if we could do another one. Okay, on this problem, it says convert 45 grams of O2 to atoms. Okay, and I have one quick fix for you is this is O2, so diatomic right here. Okay, I, the tube did not, it, when it came out on my iPad, just went big instead of being a, a subscript. Okay, so we're going to convert from grams to atoms. Okay, now this is more a more difficult one, but it's still one of our six little conversion factors down here. So it's going to be 45 grams of O2 times some conversion factor. And it's going to get us an answer. Okay, so let's see if we could set this up. Let's go with our bottom number of our conversion factor, which is our given. Which one is given? Well, I have been given grams. Okay. So once again, we know that there are two of them that have grams at the bottom. So once again, we're looking at these two. Okay. And it's still number of grams, aka molar mass right here. So the molar mass for O2 is 16 plus 16, which is 32.00 grams for every one mole of O2. Okay, so now we got to figure out our top part. What are we looking for? Well, I'm looking for atoms. That's going to be the top one right here. Okay, so that means we are not looking for that ratio. This is the correct one right here. And I, it says, I write 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay, so I got a, a little conversion factor right here that I'm going to use. I could double check. I got grams up top and grams down below. And so I am going to end up with an answer in atoms. And we're going to go ahead and calculate this. We are going to take 45 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 32 to get our answer. And that answer is going to be 8.47 times 10 to the 23rd. And because atoms is what I was looking for, the top part of the conversion factor, then my unit is atoms as well. Okay, well... Those are two examples on what we are looking for. Uh, try to do some practice, ask some questions, and I will see you next time.